In this problem, we have a complex number and we're being asked to write it in trigonometric form. Let's go ahead and work through its solution. So the first thing I like to do in these problems um, is to graph the complex number. So remember, there is a one here. So you can think of this complex number almost as an ordered pair, square root of three comma negative one. You can think of it that way. So when you graph it in the complex plane, you're going to go right by square root of 3 and down 1. So maybe it's somewhere here. This is your complex number, three square root of 3 minus i. And again, you can think of it um, this way here. The next step is to find r. So r is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared. So your x in this problem is the square root of 3 and your y is negative 1. So this is equal to the square root of the square root of 3 squared plus, and then y is negative 1, so negative 1 squared. When you square the square root of 3, you get 3, so this is 3, and when you square negative 1, you get 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So r is equal to 2. So now we have our r, we have our little picture, which I'll draw like this because we are going to need to find this angle at some point. Now, let's just think about what we really want. We want this to be in trig form. So that means that the square root of 3 minus i needs to be equal to r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. And so now we know what r is. So this is 2 parentheses cosine theta plus i sine theta. Now you can distribute the 2, so this is 2 cosine theta plus 2i sine theta. To find theta, what we can do is use properties of complex numbers. Two complex numbers are equal when the real parts are equal, so this must be equal to this. So 2 cosine theta is equal to the square root of 3. And the imaginary parts are equal. So 2 sine theta, 2 sine theta is equal to negative 1. Solving each of these for the trig function will give us cosine of theta equals the square root of 3 over 2. And sine of theta equals negative 1 over 2. All right, now we just have to think about the special angle uh, for which this is true, keeping in mind where we are. We're way down here, right? We're in quadrant four, it's very important. So the angle that will give us uh, this is pi over six. The cosine of pi over six is square root of three over two. But we also want this to be true. So we need to be down here. So if you think, what angle has a reference angle of pi over six and is in quadrant four? Well, that would be 11 pi over 6. And the reason is this distance here is pi over 6, this angle here, because this is 2 pi, which is 12 pi over 6. So to get from 11 pi over 6 to 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi, you add pi over 6. So the angle in this problem is 11 pi over 6. That's why the picture was really important at the beginning, because if you just, you know, you could easily pick um, the wrong, you know, the wrong angle. So. Uh, very, very key. Okay, so um, now all we have to do is uh, write the answer down. So the final answer is going to be uh, R, which we said was 2, parentheses, cosine of, uh, we said 11 pi over 6, plus I sine 11 pi over 6. Another way to do this problem, uh, another way to find r, is to use this formula here, the tangent of theta equals y over x. And if you do this, um, y in this problem, let me go back up and refresh your memory, y is negative 1 and x is the square root of 3. So you would get negative 1 over the square root of 3. Now if you do something like this, you have to pay extra attention to where um, the angle is because you don't have this condition. You see. When we did it our way, we had both conditions. 
So we were able to clearly see where the x coordinate is and clearly see where the y coordinate is because remember on the unit circle, cosine is the x coordinate and sine is the y coordinate. So you can clearly see where everything is. Whereas if you do this, this kind of hides information. So um, that's why I do it um, this way. That's it.